would remain standing and turn in your pew Bible to page 1,562. Our scripture reading this morning is out of Mark, Mark chapter 6, verses 30 through 32. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all that they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, And he said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you. You may be seated. We're working through our tools of the trade growing in Christ, closer with Him. I have to say that this is probably one of the more difficult ones. Silence and solitude and quietness. At the same time, you may find it interesting that this is one of my favorites. And you're probably thinking, really? Seven kids, quiet, solitude, silence. There comes a point in time when you learn to appreciate how valuable it is, right? But it is. Quietness. Sitting. And you know what? We need to understand that it's okay to be quiet. It's okay. In a world that has taught us that noise and busyness and activity is good. We've become comfortable with those things. Probably one of the most difficult things that we could do is to sit and not talk. Silence. Silence in talking about it from a standpoint out of a spiritual discipline from Scripture, is the practice of voluntarily or temporarily to stop speaking so that certain spiritual goals can be focused on. Voluntarily stop speaking so that you may pursue a spiritual goal, relationship with God. Now, that doesn't mean that you can look around and go, you know what, I think you need to go practice silence. God's telling me to tell you, shut it! Now, we all can feel that at some times, right? And we all know who you are. (laughs) And you know what, it's the same with being in solitude. Solitude is the practice. It's voluntarily being absent from other people so that you may be present with God. Now, it doesn't mean when you're at work and you're looking at that one person, you're like, I think you need to go practice solitude. God's telling me, right? We've all been there because we have that point of relationship with people where it's like, you know what, there is this quiet room off to the side where you can practice silence and being alone. I think you need to go do that. But that's not what God's talking about. It really is a point for us to be quiet, to not speak, and to listen, and to be alone. And it's okay to be alone. It's okay to be silent. There's always a point in time when silence starts to become awkward. Right? You can feel it. And you're like, somebody please just talk. Somebody say something because this is driving me crazy. It's designed to drive us into relationship. 
Because when we stop talking, that means that our other senses are heightened. You listen better when you don't talk, right? You see things that you don't see before. You feel things. You experience things that you don't at other times. There's several reasons throughout Scripture why Jesus went to a solitary place where he got quiet. Even he invited his disciples to go be quiet with him. Two of the biggest. Jesus went to the wilderness for 40 days right before he started his ministry, his earthly ministry. He spent 40 days in tension alone got visited by the devil, but he went away from everybody else. So even in our lives, when there are big things that are coming, when we're getting ready to step into something new, when our quote-unquote next is on the horizon, you know what? It's a good time to get alone with God. You will hear things, see things, experience things, that you wouldn't in any other time, because so much of the noise around us is simply a distraction to keep us from being and doing, becoming who God intended us to be. We get distracted. We all admit it. It can be from our telephones to just getting out. I just need to get out and take a drive. I need to get out. I want to go out and have dinner with somebody because you know what? I, I don't like to be alone. When God is inviting us to be alone with Him, we play the card of, I I'm just shouldn't be by myself. You know what? That's the best place you can be sometimes. Because it's between you and Him. The one who made you, the one who gave you breath, and the one who sees everything that you're dealing with. To be alone with Him. And to be quiet. In those times of quietness and silence and being in solitude... Again, remember, both of those things are not just close your mouth and be alone. It's for a purpose. You're being quiet and you're not talking because you need to listen and you want an answer. Or you need to understand the situation that you're in better. So there's a purpose in each one of those things. And in those times is the best time to practice and understand how God wants to communicate with you. Because if our mouth is closed, then most of the times our ears are open. Our heart is open. And it's during those times, it is a great time to practice communication between you and the Father. We just need to get comfortable with being quiet. And that can be a challenge. Amen? I mean, you know what, there are, and, and, and this, this, I'm not pointing any fingers to anybody, but you know what, there are some times that people need noise to go to sleep. That makes no sense to me. But they're like, we got this great sound machine. It plays all these kind of things. And I'm like, why? But it's like, it drowns out everything else. And in our silence, God will speak. He will. God will speak. He will communicate to us. Also, our quietness, our solitude, helps us familiarize ourselves with the peace that Paul talks about in Philippians chapter 4. There's a peace that passeth all understanding. That's what the Bible says. That means that something, peace, this peace, God's peace, will come over you so much so that you can't explain it or understand it. That's pretty powerful, isn't it? But you can experience that and familiarize yourself with it in the quietness, in the silence. There is a peace that only God will provide.
Jesus also went to spend time alone in the Garden of Gethsemane before the cross, before something beyond trying, something that he had to face that was beyond what, what we have ever faced. But he got alone. He even told his disciples, no, this is between me and my dad, but I need you to stay out here and pray. But this is me and him, and I need to talk to him, and I need to listen, and I need to be alone. I need to be in solitude with him. This is so much of what God's talking about in Psalm 46 where he says, Be still and know that I am God. He doesn't say, Be still and be quiet and rehearse all of your problems. He says, Be still and know that I am God over your problems. That I am God here to protect you. That I am God to hold your worry, that I am God to allow your cares to be cast into my lap, that I am God. So you be still and know that I know what's happening, I know what's going on, and I've got you. But in our trials, we spend a whole lot of time trying to figure things out, don't we? Being still, silent, solitude, and quiet does not hit the top ten things that I'm going to do when I'm having the troubles. But you know what? Those are what God tells me to do. To be quiet, to be still, to listen. Stop talking, Ian. Open your ears. I have something I need to tell you. Be still and know. Here's another attack of the enemy in all of this, is that me being quiet and me being still means that I'm not doing anything. And you need to be doing something. Because God helps those who help themselves. And if I'm not doing something, then God's not seeing me put forth any effort. So then he's just going to let me off to the side and just be on my own. That's not true. How can God tell me to go do something and tell me to be still at the same time? Somebody's wrong. But God is telling us to be still. And here's one of the things that we don't think about. Being still, being quiet, silent, is doing something, isn't it? Because we were just sitting here talking about and even laughing about how hard it is. How hard it is to really be quiet. So are you doing something? Yes, you're practicing self-control. You're practicing obedience because God tells you to be quiet. He tells you to be silent. He tells you to be still with Him. That is doing something. True? Yes. So we are doing something. We're being obedient. We're being submissive. We're being humbled so that God moves. And He will. Some of the, si the benefits of, of being silent or spending time in solitude, it brings clarity to decisions that need to be made, questions that we have. When we're seeking God's will, get quiet, get alone, and be still. It allows rest. And a lot of times I hear this, like, Ian, when I stop to pray and I bow my head, man, I'm out. I just fall right asleep. Do you want to know what? Maybe that's not a bad thing. Maybe you do need the rest. Maybe your body needs that. So don't condemn yourself. Accept the rest that God's given you and then wake up and get back at it. But it allows for us to rest our bodies, our minds, and our spirits. We all need rest. Sometimes that's exactly what God wants for us. But in that, it also calms our hearts and our minds. At so many points, we have allowed the rush or the hurry 
of the world to own us. Right? Man, I gotta be. Sorry, I gotta cut this conversation short. I gotta go. I gotta go do this. I've gotta go be here. I've got to, I've got to, I've got to. Rush, rush, rush. Hurry, hurry, hurry. That is a grip that the enemy grabs a hold of you and just can strangle the life out of you. Silence, solitude, breaks that. It breaks it. When you're quiet and alone with the Lord, the more you do it, the more practiced you become at it, the benefits that you see from it break that grip of the enemy. That is push, rush, hurry, faster, go, go, go. It breaks it. And with that, it calms our emotions. How many times do we react wrongly? Actions, voice tones, words, body language, because I have been pushed, I have been going, I have been going from here to here to here, and I am done. I am not alone, am I? No. That is a huge thing for us, isn't it? And the rush and the push that the enemy has us doing ends up constructing our lives in a way that even our responses are based off of that. Does it need to be quiet? Be still and know that I'm God. When we get in the practice of being still, when we get in the practice of being silent, our emotions calm. They really do. It also helps us control our tongue. Being silent helps us control our tongue. In many ways. But being silent helps us understand the value and the power of our words. Because when E.F. Hutton talks, everybody listens. Because E.F. Hutton doesn't talk too much. Right? And that's the concept of it. It's really like, you know what? <laughs> when so-and-so starts talking, I listen. Because you know what? They don't talk much. But when they say something, it's important. It's, valu it's wisdom. It's valuable. It's relevant. But somebody that talks all the time, every one of us has a tune-out button. <laughs> don't we? We do. But it helps us control our tongue. The less we speak the more we understand how valuable and powerful and influential our words are and can be. So there's a taming that happens in that. It's kind of like, like we were talking about going through a time of fasting. And the longer you go without certain things, the more you begin to realize that you don't need them. I don't know why anybody wouldn't need snickerdoodles or anything like that, but just saying. There are certain things that as we fast, we realize we don't need. And our silence is almost a fasting from words. So you realize, you know what, I don't need to say that. I don't need to say it that way. <laughs> you know, what I just said really caused more issues in the situation than it did a benefit. So if I just reel that tongue back in and just not speak, I don't need to cause more strife or more madness or more frustration or I don't need to necessarily give my opinion in that situation because it's not needed. But our silence in this discipline, in this spiritual discipline, teaches us and it trains us. Because there's going to come points in times that God's going to say, you know what, I need you to speak. This is what I need you to say. 
And when you do, the people around you are ready to hear what God has to say, not you, but what God has to say through you. Needless to say, silence, solitude, deepens our relationship with God. I think every one of us has someone, or maybe we have a few somebodies, that you just enjoy being with. You enjoy being in their presence. They don't have to talk. You just like being with them. There's a closeness that you feel. At points, even a draw that's like, man, I would really like to sit down and just be with so-and-so. And there's a desire in our hearts that opens up to go, I would like to know them more. We've all experienced that on the physical level. And that's what God is doing here is He is inviting us into that relationship with Him. Because you know what? There are times that I just really enjoy sitting and listening. What does God have to say? What does He want to show me? There comes a point in time when it's like, you know, Lord, what do you want to tell me about today? What do you want to talk to me about? In the quiet, in the stillness, just to listen, to see, to watch. He's the creator of all things. There's plenty to look at. That's part of what I say before, and I say, you know what? There are just those times that we get to see His fingerprints all around us. In creation, in people, in situations and circumstances. He marks all of those things. But are we too busy to see them? Are we running too fast? Because there's so many times that we blow by His handiwork that actually has an answer for something that is heavy on our hearts. And He's wanting to show us. So how do we get into this? And how do we do this? Take a minute. Start with a minute. It's been busy. Had a busy day. You pull in the driveway. Sit in the car for a minute. Don't finish listening to your favorite song. Turn it all off. Turn your phone upside down and sit for a minute in the quiet. Take a deep breath. God, is there something you want to tell me? Incorporate it into your day somehow. Maybe if you're at home with all of the kids, it's lock yourself in the bathroom. You laugh. We've all done it. Right? It's true. You find the quiet place. Where's the quiet place? What we need to do, though, is when we get there and finally get the door locked, don't turn anything else on. Be quiet. Incorporate that into your day. And then as it builds, get away for the weekend. Well, Ian, you have no idea how busy my life is. You're right, I don't. But what I do know is this. As much as I have going on in my life personally, when it's serious enough, and when you're serious enough, you'll find the time. You will. When you find out how important it is for you, when you see the added benefits of your deeper relationship with the Lord, then those weekends, those minutes turn into an hour, and those hours turn into hours, and those hours turn into days, and those days turn into weekends, and those weekends turn into, I can't get enough. Exactly. Exactly. And when situations come up, much of what like we see in Scripture, 
Jesus is getting ready to start something new in his life. He's getting ready to start his ministry. He goes away and spends some time with the Lord. He's faced with a very difficult thing in his life. He gets away to spend some time with the Lord. All of the situations in our lives, we can find it in Scripture somewhere, and attached to that is time alone with God. Because you know what? He's in everything. He sees everything. He wants to be of every part in, within your life. He wants to be infused into who you are and what you're doing and what you're stepping into. And sometimes the one way to get ready to step into something very difficult is to have some time alone in a way with Him. Power. Power comes from being alone with God and being silent before Him. But I have a word of warning. As you step into doing this, as you find your time to be quiet and alone, be prepared for the crazy when you get home. Because what you're doing is a spiritual, what is called the spiritual discipline. It's this, it's this time of building a relationship with God, and who doesn't want that? The enemy doesn't. And so if I go and I spend some time away and I come home and it is just chaos, I'm going to have one or two reactions. Either, fantastic, man, I can never go anywhere. You guys need me to be here because I can keep things in control. Yeah, my kids laugh at me. They're like, yeah, Dad, you're right. You keep thinking that. Or... I can walk in and go, you know what? That time that I just spent was so valuable for me and my relationship with the Lord that it made the enemy so mad that he has come and tried to disrupt my house. The fight is on. And let me tell you who's going to win. Enemy, out. My house. My house, what I've been given, what I've been gifted, what I'm responsible for, and that God is going to help me take over that. Or if I take a day off of work and I get back to work and everything has broken loose. Attack. The same one you just spent time with will correct and realign what's going on in your house, in your job in your heart, in relationships. The word of warning is, when you step into spending time with the Lord, the enemy doesn't like it, and he's going to come after you. But you are more than, what does the Bible say? Conquerors. That's who you are. You will find that the time you spend alone with the Lord builds your strength, it empowers you, it gives you confidence to move forward and to face the attacks that are coming against us. But it puts you in a position to be given more from God to go be and do what He's called you to do. But church, I want to encourage you. It's okay to be silent. It's okay to be alone with the Lord. It's good. Jesus modeled it for us and encouraged his disciples to do it. And that's who we are. So I encourage you, find some alone time. Even if it's a minute, sit in your car, even if it's longer. It's okay to close our mouths, open our ears, and spend some one-on-one -on -one time with the Lord. Father, Lord God, I thank you for, your day, for this day that you've given us. I thank you for your blessings, the love that you have for us. God, we thank you for blessing us. We thank you for walking with us. God, we thank you for giving us insights into these tools that we can deepen our relationship with you. But Father, I also ask you to give us the strength that we need to do these things that may seem uncomfortable or abnormal. But, Father, that we can follow you and that you will walk with us and you will lead us and you will guide us, Father, that we can trust you and find you faithful.
to walk with us and protect us and communicate with us. Lord, we love you and we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen.